Mishkan Israel is universally regarded as the first uh, Jewish congregation in Connecticut. It's actually the second oldest Jewish congregation in New England. Uh, and you probably know what the oldest one is. Uh, Newport. Turo Synagogue, exactly, uh, in Newport. Um, as Aaron said, uh, Mishkan Israel was founded by uh, Bavarian Jews for the most part. Um, they purchased a uh, purchased land for a cemetery in 1840. Um, that's the first step that any Jewish community needs to take. Uh, you've got to have a, a, a place uh, for the long term. Um, and that was done before uh, it was legal in New Haven uh, for non-Christian congregations to form. Um, by 1843, uh, the General Assembly passed a law legalizing um, the establishment of non-Christian congregations and uh, Congregation Mishkan Israel was formally incorporated at that time. Um, in 1846, and by the way, we think of of uh, Mishkan Israel as being the oldest uh, reform synagogue uh, in New England. Uh, when it was founded in 1843, it still was under Orthodox um, uh, traditions, and a majority of the of the congregants seceded from uh, the congregation in 1846 uh, and established a reform uh, congregation. At this point, it, their congregation was uh, dedicated by Rabbi Isaac Meyer Wise, uh, the great uh, uh, pioneer of Reform Judaism in the United States. Uh, and he spent a lot of time with uh, the pre first president of, uh, of Michigan Israel, um, Leopold uh, Waterman, who was a very important religious leader more generally. Um, and in Wise's uh, diary, he writes about his, his experience with, Wy with uh, Waterman, which appears to have really galvanized him, and, and, and out of that comes much of his national uh, activity, um, ending in uh, the foundation of Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati and, and many other uh, important institutions. Um, in 1849, the Orthodox members of the shul remerged with uh, the, the larger congregation, um, but the splits continued uh, over the course of the, of the, uh, the 19th century. Um, in 1856, as Aaron pointed out, uh, they had a formal, they uh, purchased a congregational church and had a formal uh, synagogue uh, building on Court Street near where we started out um, and became powerful enough, wealthy enough, uh, successful enough uh, to make this extraordinary statement um, with this remarkable building that uh, I will uh, ask Aaron to uh, tell us about in more detail. Oh, sure. So, uh, in, in 1896, the congregation took out a $60,000 uh, mortgage. They laid the cornerstone here on January 30th, uh, 1896, and the construction was completed a year later. Uh, the building was designed by the New York City architecture team of Arnold Brunner. Uh, and Thomas Tryon. Brunner was Jewish, Tryon was not. So if they had a Jewish client, Brunner would go and meet with them. 
and if they had a non-Jewish client, they would send try in. They were very successful in doing both uh, buildings for Jewish clients and, and non-Jewish clients. But um, Brunner and Tryon had also designed exactly the same year, I think, I think also opened in 1897, a very neoclassical building for the Sheriff Israel uh, con a synagogue congregation, one of the oldest in, in, in America, New York City, on Central Park West. That was completed the same year in uh, Manhattan. That, that looks completely different from this building. That's like a Greek temple, so totally different from this kind of Spanish re Renaissance theme motifs you see here. Um, so, I mean, to my eye, uh, as a synagogue architecture uh, geek, uh, you know, this this building with the onion domes, the kind of Moorish uh, features, uh, much more closely resembles the central synagogue in Manhattan that some of you may be familiar with. That, that's at Lexington and 55th, uh, which was actually designed a generation earlier by um, the architect Henry Fernback, but this was this was actually a fairly common um, architectural style for synagogues in the 19th century. Um, and then again, in 1960, uh, the Jewish community had uh, moved out to the suburbs uh, in, in large part, and so they no longer uh, needed this building, and they opened a, a new shul on Ridge Road in, in Hamden, where where they are today. And interestingly, that that building, the new synagogue, was. Uh, just inducted into the National Register of Historic Places. So it uh, finally became old enough, the new synagogue became old enough to be on the, on the National Register. And now this is Educational Center for the, for the Arts, which has done a reasonably good job of preserving the exterior, but they've completely gutted the interior and the stained glass windows are gone, which is unfortunate. Um, 